Hi, and welcome to another tip on using Photoshop CS3 for video. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and today we're going to take a look at a really little documented feature, which is Photoshop's ability to stabilize video. Now, oftentimes you'll have a shaky camera shot, or one where there's a lot of movement that maybe you didn't want. Photoshop's auto-align features can let you take a video clip and dramatically stabilize a shot. Let's see how. What we have here are three finished examples, but we'll go ahead and do this from the beginning. In Photoshop, I can choose File, Import, Video Frames to Layers. And in fact, this feature works with both Photoshop CS3 and CS3 Extended. We choose this and we'll go ahead and navigate to a video clip and click Load. It finds the clip here and I tell it to go ahead and import the entire clip from beginning to end. And an important option here is Make Frame Animation. When satisfied, I can click OK. And that's going to go ahead and pull that in. Now, depending upon your footage, the image might be slightly distorted. I'm going to go ahead and choose Image, Pixel Aspect Ratio, and specify to use the widescreen DV Aspect Ratio, which is how this clip was shot. You'll now see that we have several layers, one after another. And if we call up the animation timeline and press play, you'll see that it plays back the frames of video, and each frame equates to one layer in the Photoshop document. Let's go ahead and select that first layer and scroll to the top and then hold down the shift key and click and notice that all the layers in between become selected. You then need to select the move tool, shortcut key is V, and come up to the options bar here where you can click on the auto align layers button. In doing so, it brings up the option to fix the layers. You can choose cylindrical, which will take care of distortion or perspective, or rely entirely upon auto, which will attempt to do the best distortion to counterbalance for any image stabilization problems. Let's go ahead and click OK, and it will process that. It analyzes the individual layers and then attempts to align them based upon their content. Now, depending upon the length of your clip, this step can take a few minutes. Photoshop has adjusted all of the images to better stabilize the shot, in this case, locking the subject in place. What we have here is a multi-layered Photoshop document, something that After Effects can easily import. Let's go ahead and turn the visibility on for all layers by clicking and dragging straight down through the layers palette you'll see that it scrolls through and turns on the eyeball visibility for each layer. At this point, we'll save this as a PSD file, and we can target a location. Once the document is saved, we could switch over to After Effects and double click in the project window to import. There we go, and I'll click Open, and it brings it in and gives us a choice, and we'll choose to bring it in as a composition and click OK. The multi-layer document is read in, and what we need to do now is just a little bit of work to process those layers. Double click to open it up, and we're gonna go ahead and change the duration of this shot. We have 49 layers here, so we're gonna make the composition 49 frames. Choose Composition Settings, or Command K, and we'll set the duration to 49 frames. And we then need to change the document preset. Now we were working with NTSC digital video widescreen footage, so I can go ahead and change that here to NTSC DV widescreen and click OK. That part's working pretty well. But what we need to do is interpret these individual layers here says it's bringing in fine at 1.20, so we're all set there. Now, let's go ahead and create a resize. I just clicked Toggle Pixel Aspect Ratio to adjust, 
and we're going to go ahead and size these clips. I need to set each clip to be one frame long. So with all the layers selected, Command A, I can go ahead and press Option right bracket. And notice that it trims it to one frame each. Scroll down to the bottom of the list. And let's just make this full screen for a second by pressing the tilde key. That's the key located next to the number one on the keyboard. I'll select the first layer and then shift click to select all the other layers. We can now choose animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers. And I'm going to tell these layers to go ahead and sequence one after another. In doing so, you see that it's created a new animation where each layer is one frame long. Let's press the tilde key again to go back here. And if I press the spacebar, you'll see that the clip is playing. Now After Effects is currently set to loop back and forth, but that's working fine. See how our subject is staying stationary in the frame and he is no longer moving? Just make a small adjustment here. And I'll take my time controls and we'll change this to loop. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer on top. We'll just add a new null object. And we'll select all the other layers and drag their parent whip to that null object. This way, we can adjust the scale of the null object and all the other layers will scale accordingly. And what we're looking to do here is adjust it so we have no overshoot or black edges. As the clip plays through, we're looking to see if we have any overshoot, but we seem to be pretty good. Let's just make a small adjustment there. I've tweaked the position and the scale there. Let's hit play. Just barely getting a little bit of bleed through on the right edge, so we'll have to scale that up just a tad. And there you go. We have stabilized a shot using Photoshop and absolutely locked that into position. Let's toggle back over to Bridge for one second where you see this technique used again. Here's the original, and then we've taken advantage of that auto align. I'll open all three of these up into Photoshop so you can see them quickly. There we go. And if we take a look at this and we hit play, there you have it. You see that that is reposition brought on by choosing just the reposition only option. But if you'd like to push that further from your original shot, choose the auto option, which will take advantage of all of Photoshop's abilities to align and change perspective. When that shot is done, you can easily import it into Adobe After Effects and scale it up to go ahead and crop out the excess edges. Will this technique be perfect for every situation? No. I have several ways to stabilize a shot. Many of them are time intensive and good image stabilization does take time. The next time you have a shaky camera or a shot where the camera suddenly moves, go ahead and give Photoshop CS3 a try and see how it compares to your other options. With this tip on how to use Adobe Photoshop CS3 for video, I'm Rich Harrington. I invite you to check out my resource website, photoshopforvideo.com, where you can find more information about books and DVDs on using Adobe Photoshop with video production.